welcome back guys to part two of three of this little series here. Today we're going to use the Raspberry Pi as a NAS or exploited option rather because spoiler alert this is not really uh, the best thing you could probably do but if you want to hear my final verdict then you should wait till the end of the video I guess. So let's just start with setting up Open Media Vault. Okay, so now I've got two things here. That's first the Raspbian Buster image. So that's the operating system for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I still remember that I think in the old days, like I don't know, like four years ago when I first used Open Media Vault, I think this was just like an image that you directly burned to the SD card. But nope, now you have to install Raspbian on the Pi and then you can uh, go ahead and install Open Media Vault. So this is the SD card from the Raspberry Pi, which I am going to uh, try and erase if I can. So let's just see if I can. Uh, I can't delete any of these. That's uh, pretty great. Maybe I can directly just burn this. Choose an image. Yeah, I already clicked on that image, but whatever. I don't need to, to check the hash, no. And there aren't any devices connected. <laughs> That's great. SDP, compact flash. Uh, no. Maybe I replug the SD card. Nope, SDB. What is SDB? SDB doesn't even exist. <laughs> That's interesting. Why can't I just uh, delete these here? Okay, now I can delete them. And now I just have one giant and unallocated space. That's maybe good, maybe not, I don't know. This still only finds <laughs> SDB, which is not. Oh yeah, it already has the image in there, so I don't have to choose it again, which uh, kind of makes sense. But yeah, this only wants to find SDB. Oh, apparently there's like a, a tool here from uh, Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi image of Ubuntu. Let's use that. Why not? Some packages could not be added. Okay. Okay, so I found a couple instructions here. Let's just uh, see if uh, I can make this work somehow. So we should lsblk minus p. And yeah, this is our SD card. I have no idea what this is trying to find there. Or well, thinking it finds, but whatever. Ah, uh, yeah, it blah, blah, blah. Many partitions have been blah, blah, have mounted, unmount them. We have none of them mounted, so that's kind of great. And we can use uh, DD Let's make this a little bit larger. We should probably also sudo that. And the in file is uh, not slash it's downloads. Then it is twenty twenty oh three. Raspbian, and then we have the file O2 Raspbian Bustelite image exactly, and we want to do that to SDF. And now it might be doing something, or maybe not. Maybe I also just completely killed my entire PC, who knows. I mean, it's the great thing about Linux, you can do whatever the heck you want, but it's uh, oftentimes a question uh, if you should. Okay, that I can write in here. Uh, I don't know if that's supposed to happen, to be completely honest. I mean, we can see this thing doing something. I mean, it's still running the process, obviously, but it doesn't look like it is doing actually anything. 
I mean, it did something, you know. Uh, let's maybe. Look at this. Yeah, it did, did something. Okay, maybe we just have to be a little bit more, a little bit more patient here. Is that the right out the files? Yep, it is. Okay, great. Then let's just uh, run this here until it is, uh, well, done, I guess. Okay, yeah, that looks a lot better. So let's just close this thing here. We can also close this thing. And we have boot and we have a root fs. And, and there we still have to do a couple of tweaks, I think. Um, because that was a problem in my last Raspberry Pi video over a year ago. Or about a year ago, I think, where I did the OpenVPN server. Where I see connected and uh, boot the Raspberry Pi and uh, go into like its UI and do a lot of stuff to enable like SSH remote access and stuff like that. Which we now don't have really because uh, now this is just a light image without any UI. Whatever, we have to do something here. A little bit further down, exactly neighboring Raspberry SSH server for remote access. It's designed to have its configuration finalized with the monitor and keyboard attached. There is no need for monitor and keyboard to support open media world isolation, blah blah, blah, blah run this headless server. Data to ensure the file system has blah blah blah. Open a file manager window displaying the file contents of the SD card. Click new text document. We are directly on boot here, apparently. Not rootfs on boot, and then we have to do. Come on, a new file. Can we do it from up here? Nope. Ah, where do I click for a new file? Like on Windows, you can just like click somewhere else. Um, let's just create a new file on my desktop, maybe. Open desktop and files. New. New folder. Okay, let's do this from the command line. Uh, we are in, I think this was media. And then on boot. Okay, so now. SSH and now we have a file called SSH here. Exactly, zero bytes, okay. SSH has no extension, blah blah, okay. Oh, that's apparently everything. Okay, then let's just plug this in and boot it up, I guess. Okay, so now this thing booted up. Let's see if we can log in with, I think it was Raspberry and then add the IP address. That's a hard no. Oh, now it's a yes. Okay, great. Uh, do you want to let me in or? Oh, I should probably also say Raspberry, not Raspberry. Ah, uh, login is Pi, and yeah, I always mix this one up. with raspberry okay <clears throat> I think this just died why I think I actually managed to log in eventually it just had a little hang there yep there we are Please look at the Pi user and type pass WD. Yeah, let's do that. We can change our password here. That's always a pretty good idea, I guess. Okay, password updated successfully. Uh, yeah, exactly. Let's run sudo apt update here. Maybe it was just the internet connection, but. 
Yeah, this thing ain't fast. Let's see how it uh, actually fares as an ass. That will be pretty interesting. I should probably note that I haven't connected the hard drives yet, uh, just because I think that it is better if we just plug them in once we have everything set up. And there we are now done. So let's just paste this thing in. So this is the install script, which is then downloaded from GitHub and then executed. Oh boy, that was now it. I think this took like 15 minutes, 20 minutes or something. I don't know. It's recommend to reboot, so let's just do that. Pseudo reboot. Okay, now it's the next day actually already. Um, as you can see, Open Media Vault booted up. We're on the web interface. Everything looks so far pretty good. Uh, all the drives are showing up. Um, so I already created file systems on the drives, which Definitely took a little while, like a couple of hours. I mean, it was like two to three hours or so, I think. Um, if this is loading at some point, I don't know, like this is just super slow. Uh, yeah, you can't see them here because I already did the raid here. Um, the problem with Open Media Vault is that you can't do really a raid with USB drives, which makes kind of sense, but it's uh, also kind of annoying. So you have to do that via the command line, basically. Uh, but then this will show up in here. This again took, I think, maybe like one to two hours or so to uh, initialize. Um, now it's actually doing a rebuild, which is, I think, also part of like the initialization process. Um, yeah, the thing that only took like two hours was the creating the file system on the RAID. So this is a RAID 5. This has uh, about a capacity you now of 21 point eight three uh, tibby bytes um yeah now <laughs> there is a bit of a problem with this entire thing so the the, the gist of it is, is i'm going to turn it uh, off now at the end of this clip because it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense and it's the, the main problem of it is that it's super slow or at least it's one of the problems as you can see this uh now it takes 43,000 minutes, so I calculated a little bit earlier where I think said like 50,000 minutes or something, but basically this takes about a month to initialize. Also with the uh, transfer speeds that I'm getting, which is around 5 megabytes a second on average, this would take like about two months to uh, fill up with data. So yeah, that's super slow, and that's not the main issue of it. The main issue really is the noise. So the problem is that these external hard drives, they just stand on like, on like wood, even if I'm trying to isolate it a little bit, as you can see from the front picture here. Um, it's still kind of resonating with the entire, uh, with the entire shelf that's on, and it's, uh, it's like a pretty deep, low uh, no, a rumble noise all the time. And I'm trying to sleep in this room here as well, and, I mean, yeah, I'm uh, already used to a little bit of noise from my NAS, but this is just a lot more. Um, so I did some more research. I looked into possible options of getting these drives into my actual NAS, and seems like that should be pretty possible. So I ordered some hardware today, and yeah, well, that's on its way already. So I can uh, put these drives into my actual NAS here pretty soon, which will also be in another video then. And I think while this is still happening, I can tell you talk a little bit about what I think about Open Media Vault because I used the software, as I already said, to build the first NAS actually with the same Raspberry Pi. Back then only with like a 16 gig USB stick, but whatever. And it's still mostly the same, like it definitely looks a little bit different now. Uh, just a little bit more modern for sure. It's a little bit weird though, I think uh, you have to create like a shared folder here first. And then you can use like SMB to share that. It's like a little bit different, uh, different workflow than FreeNAS for sure. And you can create like a shares here and that point then to the shared folders. So that's 
interesting. So there are also some, some plugins here which are pretty cool. So one of them here is for example like a downloader where you can uh, download YouTube videos. I mean I started this one here, it's just a normal video like yesterday in the evening. And it's still doing something apparently, I don't know. Maybe it's also not just just not downloading because the rate is still initializing or something. Um, it also has like smart, you can see temperatures and stuff like that, if they're okay or not. Stuff like that. So overall I have to say it's like fairly fully featured for an NAS operating system. Like you can definitely do everything that you that a, a typical like home user would need to do. There's even like uh, I think some some Docker stuff in here. I, I saw it somewhere. I think services. Maybe no. Uh, I think it was like a uh, oh yeah here in the extras you can do like Docker. You can install it by hand or something or let it install here and then uh, you can also use Docker which uh, on Raspberry Pi I don't think makes a whole lot of sense. But yeah, in the end it's pretty comparable. I mean it also has CFS support through. Uh, through a plugin, which is pretty cool. Um, absolutely makes absolutely no sense on the Raspberry Pi, obviously, but yeah, it doesn't have any virtualization support or other crazy stuff. Like I think still that FreeNAS has a little bit more to offer here, but FreeNAS also doesn't run on the Raspberry Pi. Now, obviously the big question is, should you even create a NAS out of your Raspberry Pi? And I think the answer is a hard no. Unless you have a Raspberry Pi Model 4, like then it's maybe fine, because that one has like gigabit Ethernet. It has uh, two USB 3 ports that you can definitely use. I mean, in the end, you're probably always better off just like getting some old crap like PC. I mean, I think you can get like tower PCs for free probably from like businesses. Like, I mean, I work in IT. I could just take like one old. Uh, computer of these home like every month and that's just going to be a, a lot better uh, of an option than using a Raspberry Pi because then you can use like SATA and stuff like that and in the next video I'm going to talk a bit more about these external hard drives and chucking and uh, why you would want to do that uh, and all that that goes into that because I guess I, I look just at the price of these external hard drives and the uh, price is like extremely good, right? So that's the main reason that people buy them, that when I use them for mass storage. Uh, and I thought like, hey, maybe the Raspberry Pi that I have laying around is a good fit for that, but no, it's definitely not. And with that, I think I'm also going to end the video. There are not going to be like any benchmarks here or anything. Um, basically, I was starting to copy like a large file, like over a terabyte to it yesterday, and it is now like 16 hours later it has like transferred 300 gigs or so over not very fast okay so that's shut it down for good